Welcome to the second tutorial for Faceware Live Client for Unity 2.5. Now that we have our characters set up as it created, we're ready to connect our scene to live server to stream animation onto our character. If you haven't done character setup yet, please see our previous tutorial for Live Client for Unity. We have our rig in the scene and our character setup file loaded into the Faceware Character Setup window, as you can see here, and all our expressions are set up. So now we have to add a component onto an object in our scene that contains the Live Client script. In the previous version of Live Client for Unity, you would manually create a game object and add the script yourself. In this newer version, however, we streamlined it a bit. At the bottom of your character setup window, you'll see this section called Step 3, Save Your Character Setup File and Apply It to Character. That just contains one button, Save and Apply to Character. Once we've finished our character setup file and we're happy with it, we simply press this button. What this button does is add a prefab component over here that you can see in the inspector directly onto the character object. It's called Live Client Script and is where you're going to be entering your live server settings to get the animation streaming onto the rig. There are only a few settings that you need to check here. The first is the live server host name. This is the IP address for the computer that's streaming live server, which you can find at the bottom of the live server interface. Uh, if you're using both live server and Unity on the same machine, then you can just set it to localhost as you see here and that's the default value. One cool thing to note is that if you're using localhost, you'll see this calibrate button up here, which will let you perform facial calibration for live server directly from the live client in Unity. If you aren't using localhost or if you change it, you'll see that button disappear. Next, we're gonna set our live server port number. The default for both live server and live client is 802. But you can change it as necessary to meet your needs. Just be sure that the number in live server and in here, both match. Finally, we have our character setup file. Because we chose save and apply to character in the character setup window, it already has our character setup file asset selected. If you're adding the component manually by going to add component, scripts, and selecting live client, you'll have to manually navigate to find your character setup asset. But we recommend using save and apply to character since it's easier and quicker most of the time if you're doing character setup in the same session. Once you have everything set up in the live client component, all you need to do is make sure you're streaming out of live server, which you're going to do by pressing this button, hit play in Unity, and you'll see your character animating. That's all there is to it at a basic level, but there are a couple other options in the component that I want to cover real quick. So generally speaking, you're going to leave these options checked on. Everything will be fine, but I want to run through them real quick just to show you what they do. The first is connect on play. As it sounds, this will connect your Unity scene and character to the live server data stream as soon as you hit play, which you just saw a moment ago. If you don't want that to happen, you uncheck it. If it's unchecked, then nothing's going to happen when you hit play until you press connect here in the live server component. The second is automatic reconnect. If this is checked, then if the connection between live server and Unity is lost and comes back while the scene is playing, Live Client will, as the name suggests, automatically reconnect to the live server data stream. Generally, it's a good idea to keep this checked on for that reason. The final checkbox is drop packets on update. If this is off, then Unity will try to use every packet, data from every single frame coming out of live server without dropping any. If you're streaming data from live server at 60 FPS or more, as is ideal, then sometimes Unity can have a hard time keeping up with all the data coming through, and you'll start to see lag in your live animation. Keeping this box checked on will prevent this from happening by dropping packets if necessary to keep the animation from lagging. We recommend keeping all these checked on for pretty much every case, but I just want to let you know about some of these options and what they are. And that's pretty much it. As you've seen, our latest live client for Unity has some nice usability changes and some great under the hood changes, so setting up your character and streaming your live animation is easier than ever. For more info and tutorials, please keep an eye on our YouTube page and visit facewaretech.com.